I was here actually 10 years ago on the training facilities look very much like they did 10 years ago. Uh, I was also able to sit in on an AR yesterday and I could see the level of training, the quality that my folks here from the 40th cab are getting is, um, is top notch. So you, you may or may not know that the 40th cab um, consists of soldiers from nine different states and the opportunity to, to bring those aviators together along with their maintainers, the air traffic control, and to build that cohesive team. We're, we're doing that really with the, the help and the expertise of the 166 Aviation Battalion and, and First Army Div West. The OCTs that we've been able to work with, I say we, you know, the 40th Cab, are very experienced. But, but one of the things that they bring is a, is a different perspective and it's sometimes hard to see yourself and understand what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Sometimes um, being able to have somebody come from outside and to, and to take a look at you, you're gonna get critique and you're gonna get um, feedback on, on things that you didn't see um, yourself. Because we do have fantastic instructor pilots, we have great leadership here, but um, again, having, a, having a, another view of yourself from outside and for those people to be as highly qualified as they are to be able to not only find the things that we need to work on, but actually give us the tools and say, hey, you know, you might try this battle drill this way or use this SOP. And so they're, they're not only identifying areas that we might need to work on and also letting us know what our strengths are, but giving us the tools um, so that when this organization goes forward, it's, it's gonna be as strong as it possibly can be. The National Guard has never been busier than we've been in the last year. Uh, when the COVID pandemic hit, we did not have the luxury of shutting down operations like uh, corporations and other entities a a across the United States because our communities still need us to do things. We've been very active over the last year, augmenting skilled nursing facilities, operating food banks. We've had soldiers out assisting the coroner with the mortuary fairs. Uh, we've had a huge fire season last year as well. And then on top of that, we had a massive activation last summer when the civil unrest um, happened. In California, we activated 10,000 soldiers in a matter of three days. And from the time that we were requested until the time we had the first soldier on the ground, it was a matter of about six hours. So it, it's, been, it's been really busy. Our strength is, again, that we're part of the community, that most of us hold other jobs or do something else when we're not in uniform and that brings really a, a whole other layer of skill sets that you don't necessarily find on the active duty side. So for instance, my command sergeant major for the 40th Infantry Division, he's the principal of a high school. You know, and we have architects, we have small business owners, we have people that are leaders in their community and when they come, they bring those skills and those talents with them and I think it makes us very adaptable and very agile to, to the changing circumstances and the challenging times that we find ourselves in. Yeah, you know, People First has, has really always been a priority of, of my own, and so I'm really glad that the Chief Staff of the Army is obviously making it a priority as well. So the National Guard's a little bit different because we are responsible for doing our own recruiting and, um, and retention in, in our unit depends on us being, you know, organized, um, as well equipped as possible, but fundamentally taking care of our people. And not just our soldiers, but our soldiers' families, and for those that have jobs outside the National Guard, the employers as well. And if, and if we don't prioritize people, we will not be able to recruit and retain the talent that we need. So it's absolutely critical to our success. From a mobilization standpoint, you know, I think it would be shared across all compos that we did not join the Army to train. We joined the Army because we want to defend our nation against enemies foreign and domestic. And so when you have the opportunity to take the training that you've received and actually apply it, it is the most fulfilling thing as a soldier. And as I've been circulating around talking to soldiers, they're really thrilled to be able to, to do their job and to fulfill their purpose in the Army. And they all understand whether it's an air traffic controller, um, supply NCO, uh, aircraft mechanic or pilot, they all understand how important 
their jobs are for making the mission work. And so I think you'll find soldiers are, are pretty happy and pretty satisfied to be out here preparing to deploy. They're obviously all also concerned about their families at home as well. And that's, that's really the downside is that those of us in uniform, we do this voluntarily. We do it because we love it. We wouldn't stay if we didn't. But our families sometimes have more sacrifice than we do serving in uniform. Yeah, I was thrilled to hear that General Johnson was taking over as commander of First Army Div West. I um, had the opportunity to talk to him. The complexities of the National Guard and the way we operate in the homeland versus preparing for combat uh, really are enhanced by having somebody with National Guard experience in this position here. His predecessor, General Tate, was also a great partner to the Guard. But again, having somebody in the job that, that understands both the strengths and the challenges that we bring uh, to the war fight is super helpful. My experience as the first um, female infantry division commander is probably the same as um, any male infantry division commander. Uh, when you grow up in the aviation community, it's very much standards based. And um, it's been my goal throughout my career to find out what that standard is, um, meet and exceed it you know, whenever I can. But I found that being a female really has had no impact to how I'm treated throughout the Army. I've always been treated with respect and professionalism the entire time that I've been in military service. Well, I have been talking to them as I, as I circulate around and I tell them all how proud I am of them and how confident I am in their ability to do the mission and I know they will get it done because, you know, we're the National Guard, we're always ready, always there, and no matter what you throw at us, it, we make it happen and we accomplish the mission. <laughs>